brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Only One Mike Podcast called Gerard Brooklyn Dre. J-Rob is off tonight, but listen, y'all, we got a very, very special guest in the building today. The brother is an actor, a director, a producer, and now we can add author to his resume, brother A. Russell Andrews. How you doing? His brother. <laughs> hey, please. Hey, listen, first, I-, I wanted to just take the time to say thank you for making space for us. We know you're a busy man. You got the book. You got movies. You got a lot of things. I would read your IMDB page, but it's like longest train smoke, brother. You got over, what, 30 years or so? It's been here. Yeah, I don't want to sound disrespectful when I say over 30 years. Oh, no. <laughs> it, 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 bro, I earned this. You earned it, okay. yeah, most definitely. I earned this. So, it right. was crazy. I, I came in the game late, so, yeah, I earned it. Yeah, yeah, so, like, right. some of the movies you've been in, I mean, you eat we are Marvel fans here. So, like, one of the movies that you were in, like, the early, like, was it 20, was it 2003 something Punisher? Was it? Yeah, like, man, that was in that first iteration. The of first Marvel. iteration. So, that was like the, With, the, the one after Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> like, that oh, was, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That, I, that was an interesting project. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the Punisher, man, uh, Travolta, and that was a good situation. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Was that like a dream of yours of being a Marvel film? I agree with some brother. I'll be honest with you. I didn't know. I knew about them. Mm-hmm. But I won't say it was a dream, but how it came about was uh, I had to go in and audition, of course. Right. But the uh, director and Avi Arad, who is Marvel, right, mm-hmm. uh, they wanted me to come into the director's house and do this one particular scene. Okay. Out in, you know, Pasadena. And um, the deal was that I think in the in the theaters, there was one cut, and then there was a the director's cut. Right. The director's cut was hardcore because my character Jimmy Weeks, um, he commits suicide. Mm. Right, Jonathan Hensley, the director, his brother um, took his own life at Thanksgiving dinner one oh, year wow. with mm. the family. So, you know, you have this thing with suicide, you think, because people are terrified and scared, and they're like, ah, yeah. yeah. Right. It's not that. Right. It's not that at all. And I learned that from him. I didn't know. I'd never known anyone in my family or whatever mm-hmm. who had gone that way. But he said when people do that, he learned through therapy and whatever, their mind's made up. It's just a matter of when. Right. Right. And so they're sitting at the table everybody's talking. He seems to be doing okay. All of a sudden, he reaches under the table, comes up, bam. Wow. Mm. What they wanted me to do in the, I guess, in his library is to make the decision on camera. Mm -hmm. Mm. And how was I going to do it? And Jonathan, we spent about 10, 15 minutes in another room because, you know, you had all of the Marvel folks at the long table, obviously at the end. And he said, just commit to the truth. Mm-hmm. Just the truth. It's not a whole bunch of, you know, it just you, you're talking, you're sitting there, and then all of a sudden, bam. Right? Right. right? That's how it played out in the project. I say that to say that I think I had the uh, the job before then, but by the time I walked out the room, I did because I did what they wanted. Mm. But I had some other little color, right? Because you know, I'm, a, I'm a theater guy, so mm. all those behaviors and mannerisms, you know, um, leading up to it. And it turned out, for me, it turned out to be a really good project. There, there, There's a slight dilemma to it. Once you are established as a Marvel character, unless you're Sam Jackson, yeah. Uh, <laughs> once, yeah, it could be all over the place. Once, all over the place. Man, listen. Once you are established, you cannot come back mm. in another Marvel project. Wow. Mm. So I've gotten right to the edge with a couple of other projects, mm. right? Uh, Wolverine and whatever. However, 
um, when they realize and once they know, because they feel like you have established this in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Right, 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 right. But man, I still, I'm on the street driving my Jeep. I have a Jeep I never put the top on. I see people all the time. Jimmy Weeks, oh, you're Jimmy yeah, Weeks. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, a yeah. 20-year-old film. But, yeah, it still does well. It holds up. No, brother, it does. Yeah, it holds yeah. up. People are serious about Marvel. They're serious about Star Wars and all what? these different things, yeah, man. Yeah. They're serious about They're it, serious man. serious about that stuff. Man, yeah, man. My, my son, he's a fanatic of Star Wars, Spider-Man, all that. Just yeah. Spider-Man is a whole nother animal. Right, yeah. right, 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 yeah. right. Oh, it 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 crosses gender and genre, age, color. Yeah, right. Like he's out the box, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain, certain things that you know that will always like seem like it's going to transcend time. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like, everybody's going to know who Michael Jackson is. What you did a project about Michael Jackson. Um, everybody's going to know who Michael Jordan is and Mike Tyson. Like everybody's going to know certain things. You know, as Tom, those are one of those things. Like you look at man, I yeah. just I just heard something about saw a video with Prince the other day. I had no idea existed. Right, right. Yeah, and, and that people have these things, and we don't really. He is so immensely, unlike godly talented, but he is as deep as they come. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. As a man, and then add the business on top of it. He was a uh, he was different. Mike Michael was also, uh, and both of sad losses. And uh, I've asked people sometimes, were they even ever really here? <laughs> you right, know, right, right, yeah, right. but that they are just they're like that. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I digress. With Mike and Prince, it's like you know, I remember my mom said years ago, like some people when you look at them from a young age, you know, there's some old Southern wisdom. She was like, some people <laughs> you can see that they not born to get old. You know what I mean? Like you never, only, never. You, only, you only seem. It seems like they're supposed to not be here. You know, you don't expect to see Prince as an old fat man at sixty five no. and yeah, seventy no. years old. Yeah. You know no. what I mean? Prince Whitney. You right. know, right. 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 right, right, right. I could have Although, actually, I could have actually seen Whitney get old. I could have actually seen that. <laughs> yeah, that that may have been something. Bobby, yeah. maybe I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, we just yeah. we just saw the Dion Warwick. Um, 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 thing on CNN, mm-hmm. the doc on her was, bro. Yeah, you 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 don't know until you stand in someone's shoes what they're doing. Right, 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 right. and why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she she was old school man, but she had such depth. She had such clarity about what she was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can't imagine Whitney. Yeah, watching her get old would have been would have been a joy. Yeah, I was going to say, Russell, don't make me be the only one here in this conversation. No. Yeah. <laughs> I can't no, imagine no. Whitney. Getting yeah, old. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd man in the corner, man. Like, yeah, you know, right? No, she she was uh, she was special. We again, we we do a lot of docs here. So we we saw hers recently, Tina Turner. Yeah, mm. yeah, bro. And um, yeah, that Sam Cooke piece a little while back was good. All those, man. I mean, I'm older than you, cat. So, yeah. like, for yeah. instance, I was eight when I saw my first Jackson Five concert. Wow. Mm. Okay. Yeah, bro. So you can say who was there? Who was there? Was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, yeah. I was there, was there, and my neighbor down the street. Uh, her daughter was in my third grade class and she took us to see James Brown in Houston at the uh, Sam Houston Coliseum. So I, I've, I've seen some things, man. Yeah. You've been around. You've been around. Yeah, but yeah. Deep, that's when, you know, your whole family would sit around and listen. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, family reunions, parties, car games, oh, dinners, yeah. you know, 8 to 80, everybody's in the same yeah. room. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. We're trying to sneak that hot beer when we can. <laughs> yeah. We do. The cha- we done changed now. We, we cut. Oh, yeah. It's a little different. It's we a cut, little different. cutting the watermelon up in the little cubes now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah been, re- been reading those parenting magazines. Yeah. Right. 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 right, right. You're you happy if you got a watermelon with a seed in it these days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, man. 
Well, maybe they find back. some some, going back. some medicinal yeah. purpose for it. Somebody will start bringing it back. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> right. right. But listen, your yeah. your like I said, your page is just is just you know long with movies. You were in Peppermint, straight out of company. Actually, just to go back, Peppermint wasn't a bad movie, folks. If you watched it, I think it's on Netflix. Wasn't a bad movie at all, you know. That's why that Method Man wasn't. That was an yeah. accident. Wow. Oh, really? That was an accident. My uh, friend of mine, casting director Kim, um, she called and said, "Listen, can you? Would you mind doing this? It's a small situation. They've added the character, but uh, the Jennifer and 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 uh, the director who I'd seen and worked with before." was saying, can you get here uh, tomorrow and do this? And would you? And, you know, first of all, if you know Kim Williams, you go. Mm. But secondly, it's always good to be in front of certain people, whatever the size of the role. I mean, there's that cliche that on those small roles, you know, small actors, you can take a leave or however you want to look at that. But it was a good opportunity. And again, it's something that Keeps giving, mm-hmm. okay. You know because she, uh, uh, Miss Garner, has a huge following. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and you, you know you pop on, uh, pop up on screen with them, and you've uh, you've done well. Mm. And I even look like, like I said, Method Man was in that film as well, and just you know that's our generation of watching. You know, oh yeah, just brother. to see like yeah. the, the 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 you know the evolution of those guys as they get older and see them going different avenues, writing books, right. And, and, right. and and you know, produce some movies like Reza has produced a lot of movies and you know, written a lot of scores. I think he did like a he was a conducting an orchestra or something at one point. The last I seen, and then oh, you see, nice. yeah, nice. yes, like elevator. Well, it's, yeah, but it's it's also like that with 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 uh, uh, Fifty Cent. He man, that dude took what he came in as. Yeah, he's a mogul. Yeah. Right, right. He's an Ice Cube, even you right. know. That's a little between both of us. Right. But Cube was turned this thing, man, that dude, I remember Cube was doing films for about a million, five million, and making fifty, sixty, hundred million dollars. Yeah. Right, 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 right. It's a good business model. Very good. Right. You know? right. So yeah, man, uh, I I I respect and have the utmost respect rather for for the young guy to take those opportunities and do something with them. The funny thing you said is, is like to watch, you know, their growth. I remember being at Jones Beach Greek Fest and Method Man was trying to sell me a t-shirt, man. You know, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You know what I mean? Yep. And I, that was the first, you know, Protect Your Neck, the first song and everything like that. Yes, sir. But to see them come like from where he is right now. And now he's not just, uh, you know, I thought he was just, you know, going to be a regular rapper actor, but now he seems like he's no, being a little no, sharper, and, sharper and, with it now. Oh yeah. And he's in the community. Right, 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 right. No, right. no, they out there serving, man. So yeah, they they are getting everything that uh, they deserve, and they're laying track for for other people. I mean, you still got some cats who still getting used to celebrity, but and they'll level out. I hope they all do. But cats like who we're speaking about right now, man, they are trailblazers, and. Another thing, and it speaks to what you're doing also, there's room for everybody. Yeah. Right. There's room, man. Yeah, right. Is. There's room. So we don't have to try to carve it out like we own this spot and they own the... No, no. As a matter of fact, I think we move further and faster if we do it uh, in a collaborative way. Right. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm happy to see what's coming behind. I really am. Yeah. How, how, how do you feel, you know, because I've heard this, and uh, it seems like you like them, but um, how do you feel about rappers as a whole? Because I've always heard, like, you know, like you're like a, uh, you know, like more of a theater actor. So how do you feel about them kind of taking roles and stuff like that? You know, you, you know, it, that's interesting. And I wasn't waiting to hear the word taking, but I knew it was going to be a part of it. I would say this to you. I have gotten roles where they wanted an actor who could sing, but not a singer. Right. right? Um, with them, it's a different thing because how do I say this with the respect it deserves? So much of it is about branding and marketing. Mm. And 
filmmakers and producers and what have you, they have to hit a demographic. In a typical film, blonde girl, white guy, uh, black guy, now they have uh, Indian, meaning East Indian, and they hit their demographics. Right. It covers all of the viewers. What happened is right about the time of New York Undercover years ago, mm. right? Malik, right, uh, right, right. Michael De Lorenzo. About that time, Fox, which is where they were, was blowing up. And they were doing it on the images of Black people. Mm. Because they realized something that had always been true. Right. We have that um, disposable dollar. Right? Right. I'm going to quote Dick Gregory. There was a time when 51% of all movie tickets were bought by us. It didn't matter what the movie was. Mm. Cheap entertainment for your family, for yourself, you and your lady, whatever. When rap started blowing up, they said, let's get that on TV. But they didn't do it in the way that moves the the culture forward. It was sensational. Mm. All the cop shows, you know, all, all, all the other things that were the, the must-see train wreck. Mm. They didn't care what you thought. They just wanted your eyes on that screen. Right. Fast forward to get back to the, the initial part of your question. Rap blew up, and you would know, Brooklyn, but rap blew up almost meteorically, just so fast. Right. Right? And the stories, even today, are unlimited. Mm. Some of those then were stories about what was happening in that neighborhood, in that school, in that family, in that, in that project. Right. Mm -hmm. And we became engaged because we saw ourselves and heard ourselves in a way that was only spoken of on the cut. Right. At home. But now you have now the face of the quote unquote community saying whatever they want to say. And they are, listen, can do and say whatever they want. But without a filter, it became something that they wanted on TV. They wanted in film, but they didn't want to associate with it. Right, right, right. Right. right? It's like their daughter. Their daughter can love you at school, but she can't bring you home. Right, right. (laughs) Right? Right. (laughs) See, what happened, guys, when little Johnny... And little Susie out in the suburbs right. start buying NWA. Mm-hmm. Change right? the game. Cool Mo D. Yep. Right. And I'm going to go back for a minute, right? When they start buying it, all of a sudden it became this viable, very marketable thing. Right. Now, social media blew up so large, so quick, right? It wasn't about whether the the rapper could or couldn't act. Can we get him on screen? Right. Turns out they found a lot of them. And I say that respectfully. I don't mean like us and them. A lot of them who could actually do the work as well as we could. Right. Mm-hmm. Because there was a certain reality to their work. Did they have the Juilliard? No. Did they have the, the Yale and all the other Carnegie Mellon? All of no, but you know what? What they had is what we go to school to learn. Mm-hmm. Reality. Reality was being itself the whole time. My God, man! Yeah, my, my mentor and uh, and longtime director, friend, and mentor, Club Purdy, said to me. He said, "Brother, you are walking amongst the <laughs> that you're trying to study. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's here. It's behavior. It's man." Of course, don't get me wrong, there is technique. Right. And there are, there are the best of us who know how to make love to that camera and vice versa. Right. You know, Denzel has his look. Baola has her moment. Fish has hers. You know, Taraji has hers. There's some folk out there who know what to do, how to do, and when to do it, right? But when, when the, the, the rappers came in, we had to adjust our egos. Mm. 
to say, you know what? This is not a singular thing. As a matter of fact, by them coming in and now taking that money they're making and producing, right, and directing and writing, they broadened the palette. Right. So now there's more for everybody. Wow. So, right. again, our egos had to step back and say, why am I trying to claim something that I'm barely in anyway? Because we still only make up, at best, 10% of what's on movies, what's in movies, and what's on TV. Mm. Right, right. You know, so try to hold this exclusivity, right? Try to hold this thing as if you don't belong. That's counterproductive. Wow, okay. It doesn't make sense. Right, and right. I think we have benefited um, by virtue of them coming in. Let me ask you this question, being that you brought up her name in regards to, you know, what's going on with Taraji P. Henson. What do you um, think about that whole thing? Brother, I, I, let me, in a very rudimentary sense, <clears throat> I do not know her. Right. I have met her twice. If we met again, she may not even remember. Right. However, her plight, if you will, is almost universal to our culture. Okay. You can add some, let's say, white actresses to it. Right. Because the business of this is run by him. Right. right? Tyler is an anomaly. Right. Spike is an anomaly. However, Taraji's, what she's speaking of right now, if I said she's 110% correct, I would probably still not have enough. <laughs> because he's 110 percent correct. Right, 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 right. And if, right. I, and if I can't interject, Russell, let me just give the, the people some context, no okay? So she said that when you hear someone go, such and such made 10 million, she said that it didn't make it to their account. She also said off the top, Uncle Sam is getting 50 percent, and now you have five million. Your team is getting 30 percent of what you gross, and not after what Uncle Sam took. Now, if you do the math. Every time I do something and break another glass ceiling, which I feel this is important, it's like she has to do it all over again. She's starting at the bottom all over, all over again. again. So, all um, over again. Yeah, I mean, so what was, what, what's your thoughts? If you can continue your thoughts on that. I, I put it to you like this. There will be a an actor um, of an equal station, if you will, doing the same or less in the same project, and they will have been able to, via their reps, negotiate a sum that Taraji and and, and her, um, her her fellow actors are deserving of, but for some reason, not even considered. Not even considered. Sometimes you will get a uh, Mark Wahlberg or or someone you know who will say, no, no, no. She deserves, Sean Penn is good for this. She and they deserve equal to, or at least commiserate with what they're doing. Right. And you don't just come in and give them some low-level, um, glad-to-be-here contract because they're doing the work and mm-hmm. they deserve it. The numbers that Taraji was putting out, Miss Henson was putting out, are clear. They are factual if you go to anyone's contract. Mm. There are things that are written in. You have to get your your reps and management to go in there and get that. Um, Sometimes you have to get a lawyer Mm. to come in and get you what was already there. But if you didn't know to ask, you wouldn't get it. Mm. It's just the way it is. It's not right. But you know that going in the game. So when we see a uh, uh, a Taraji, when we see uh, uh, you know a couple of other people who are in these projects and are instrumental, impactful to the story, representation, everything, and they've taken let's say a hundred grand, hundred and fifty for a certain role because they wanted to be there with that A-list star, they are banking that, okay, I can top this next time. Mm. Next time don't always come. May not happen, right. Right, it may not happen. One thing I read years ago was heartbreaking, but it was real, and it's showing itself, even though there are more of us in more roles. I was reading, uh, there was a strike or something going on years ago, and then, uh, an executive from one of the big agencies um, was, quote, he didn't want to be quoted, but everyone knew who he was because they put the name of the a- agency right. 
in the in this old school newspaper, L.A. Times. He said, "Why do we have to put them on TV? They're gonna watch it anyway." Mm. Wow. So it's not about if they like you and want you in it. Who from Ford or Tide or McDonald's is going to buy advertising time to see him or her? Mm. TV is about advertising. Right. Right. I do commercials also. Actually, I like doing them. A lot of actors won't because it's such a kettle call mm. situation. When we were on strike, the the commercial industry wasn't per se, on strike, but the Screen Actors Guild was. But what happened, commercials came down because there were no new shows. Mm. And advertisers didn't want to buy time on reruns. Mm. Because, again, you're going to watch them anyway. Right. right. They wanted to come out, new product, new shows, and what have. They have this thing called Upfronts. You may know about it, so forgive me. All the new shows old school pilot season, shoot the pilot, come May, you go to up front, you show everybody, all the agencies buy ad time on the new shows. Mm. Um, Pilot season is the year round now, Mm. and uh, advertising is so different, right, that it doesn't quite work that way anymore, but that determined how well your show would do, Mm. right, or at least how much time you would get you used to could do a show, guys, and they, they would give you almost a season to see if it'll work. Their right. show's getting cut after three airings. Right. right. They right. don't give it a chance to develop an audience. Mm-hmm. Right. So to sum up all of what you said, to to Raj's statement is so layered. Right, right. Starting with, starting with, she's right. Right. Monique was right. When Viola speaks, even though she's in a different ether, but to her credit, when she speaks, she she doesn't forget where she came from okay. and not in and not culturally, but in terms of the business. So she and her husband, they leave a door open, mm. right? In the best way they can for those who are coming through. And when they have the large platform, they'll speak. It they'll do it, but it doesn't always translate into uh, a good check, if you will, for the journeyman actor, mm-hmm. right. right? But again, with what Taji's doing, I think they are. Some people are sensationalizing what she's saying by using the emotional clips right. of the interviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you were to follow the whole interview and to hear that clarity. Mm-hmm that passion beyond the tears because the tears are, I won't speak on the story because I don't know enough of it. I will say this. When she hit this town, mm. like most of us, she wasn't the Taraji we know now. Right. Right. Right, right about that. Her and baby. And she stayed with it and made it happen. So some of those tears are some of those looking at that light bill a couple of years ago. You know, you know what right, I mean? Right. Right. Right, yeah, and trying to get to Ralph, which is our, you know, right. uh, with the uh, grocery store right here. You know, <laughs> she knows that and she remembers that. Right. right. So some of that passion is remembering that and that journey she's taken. And at this point in her career, given all of, not just the accolades, but right. the work. Right. Given right. all that, no, yeah. she deserves to be pray, uh, paid equal to people who again who are in her present station who might have who might have a different aesthetic for what it's worth. Given, you know, everything that you just said, if I put you in a position where you could say, what what can we do to actually change this? Because this is on Front Street now. So like now everybody knows where her breaking this down, what it equates to, and I'm pretty sure, like you said, it's people that's, you know, not to use the term derogatory, but lower on the totem pole that's coming in this thing than Taraji P. Henson. And it's like, how do we go forward and say, all right, maybe we need to look at everybody's contracts and everybody's body of work and see where everybody fits in this thing. How would you attack that, Russell? Or do, or do you be- even believe you- that this is possible to, you know, change this whole culture? It, 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 you know what? Because I, I, I kind of look at it like equal pay, you know, for just the regular 
African American, you know what I mean? Like we don't have equal pay, you know, just in the regular world. So, you know, I kind of look at it like that. Do you look at it the same way or <laughs> the end of the day, right? It is about going to the bank. Right, right. However, and this is important, we have to think we our folk, we have to think in terms of not creating these little um subsets of things and think of it in a bigger way. I say that to say all of the talent we have in all of the disciplines, film, TV, radio, music, Mm. producing, directing, acting, stage, all of those things, we have that. We have it, right? But like college football, when they start plucking all the black athletes from HBCUs and taking them to the Alabamas and the Michigans and Georgias, mm-hmm. then our, our base got smaller. There is a reality of being able to, to, to build this huge system of where we have studios, we have producers, we have actors, we have directors, we have crew, we have land, we have buildings, i.e. Mr. Perry. We have all of that. And what Todd is doing, um, uh, uh, um, brother was trying to do in Virginia 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. 30, Tim, um, brother from... um, Venus Flytrap, he was... Oh, the WKRP dude? Thank or... you. I, yeah, I, yeah. I always forget Tim's mm-hmm. last name. Forgive me, brother. Teddy Riley was trying to do it years ago mm. in music. Though. But what I'm saying is it can be done, but we have to be careful with the Tim Reed, I got no. to get mine syndrome. <laughs> Tim Reed, Tim Reed, folks. Tim Reed. Tim Reed, thank you very right, much. Right, right. Forgive me, Tim. Um, we have to think in terms of growing it. Now, in terms of growing, you might not get everything you want then, but you are moving and expanding the the base, the village, if you will. Right. Byron Allen is doing gangbusters. He's not doing just the comedy show. That dude's buying up networks. Oh, yeah. Oh, Places yeah. around the country. Yeah. That ultimately will benefit us. Because now those stations can determine what they will and will not air. I won't say will not, what they will air. Mm -hmm. That will give more room to what we're doing. It's coming. But if we can do it from our own big umbrella, as opposed to having to get a piece from here, a piece from there, we have it. Mm -hmm. We have the money as audience. We have the money as as, uh, would-be up-and-coming entertainment moguls. Mm-hmm. He had it. Right? To get um, Malcolm done, he went to the top dogs in our culture, right. in the entertainment industry, and they broke up accordingly, and look what happened. Right. Well, will all of them work? I don't know, but if we have that that resource, we can do it, and we have it. Right. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. Now, I want to. I really want to get into your book, but this is such an interesting conversation. So we're gonna. Really? Yeah, I'm we, with you. We, oh, okay. We're gonna okay, okay. definitely get into it, but I'm glad that you said that. It's an interesting thing that you said. We can do it. Do you think we have the capability of working together? And this is, you know, it's it's sad to say, but even with our people, is like this is how sometimes things don't come together is because somehow somebody's working against something. Do we have the, absolutely. Matter of fact, you know what, brother, we have more ability than we have desire. We have ability. We have money. I was going to say, I think we have more ability than in this time. I think we've ever had had it. I was going to say the same thing. As African-American people. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. And what happens is social media, the internet, affords us even more. But you have to wrangle it in and use it the correct way. Listen, do whatever you want. Do whatever, post your pictures, cakes, pies, gumbo. Do whatever you want. That's your business, right? right? Right. But in terms of what we're talking about, it is a way to use it, mm-hmm. right? So I will benefit. Do we have the capability? Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. See, the thing about it is, I'm speaking in terms of entertainment mm. and all the, the infrastructure of that. But we have people in finance. Yeah. So, you know, real talk, mm. in finance that know how to find this money, right. know how to budget and put it all together. We have bankers, mm. investors, you know, on Wall Street. We, we have those things. And access. You can make films now. Films used to be in a certain budget, right? You can make a film now, a very good film, 30, 40, 50 grand. Right. I have no idea what um, Ava's first film was. Personally, I think it was her best. Mm. I think I think Middle of Nowhere uh, was her best. Right. It was a very clean, driven story. It was very passionate. Um, the stories were clear, the acting was phenomenal, and it was one of those situations where sometimes, even as director, because I direct uh, theater as well, sometimes you have to back up and get out of the way and let the people you've hired do what they do. Mm -hmm. On screen, off screen, on stage, off stage, you know, that micromanaging, you know, hire people for that. Right. 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 But do the art, tell the story, t- uh, stay true to the story. Right. We have people that can do that for us. And we need to be able to go to them, but we have to go to them with a ongoing uh, idea, not just singular projects. Right. How do we make it inclusive? How do we bring people in? Right. How do we not um, um, determine who and who isn't worthy? Now, that's real. That's a whole nother hour yeah. right, right, you know, right. yeah. of who is and isn't worthy because we all are worthy. But because you're worthy, it doesn't mean that someone's going to give you money. Mm-hmm. Right. Because ultimately, they're not going to give it unless they can make it. Right. right. It, 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 they're... There's not a lot of brothers who who walk in the same shoes with Bill Gates, right? You know, or the the that Tesla cat, uh-huh. or Bezos, uh-huh. or whatever. But they are very very liquid people who know other liquid people who know others who can put together these giant resources, right? For us to do this, uh-huh. and do we have the ability? Yeah, the desire. Uh, yeah. The good thing that you—that's the question. The, the good thing that you brought up in this conversation is what I was always saying to people. I mean, like, it's all about the money. At the end of the day, you know, can you make the money back? And I remember when Monique was having her discussion, and I was like, well. I didn't necessarily agree with her on a Netflix side of things because I didn't think she had the audience that a Dave Chappelle has. That's the business, right? But in regards to acting. You know, she's she's an Oscar winner. You know what I mean? So, you know, I think she deserves some more cash, you know, because and, of, the, and, because and of that their fact. books. Because when they go and negotiate for them folks, first thing they say, oh, he or she was an Oscar winner. Right, right. Not only an Oscar winner, she was a principal figure in the film. Right. So that means she can carry an Oscar nominated, Oscar winning role in an Oscar winning film. She can do the work. Now, Here's what we have to be real about. Here's what we have to be real about. There weren't many roles after that that she could, not that she couldn't do, but that she wasn't considered for because she wasn't a type. Right, right. Right, or what the uh, brother said to me years ago, I hate the name drop, but they are so fascinating in their longevity. Robert Guillaume said to me one time, he said, Russell, if you don't get a role, for any given thing, you're not wrong. Mm. You may not be what they want, but you're not wrong. See, because if you're wrong, that means your mama is wrong. Mm. Your 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 brother is wrong. Your neighborhood, your school, all of that grandmama on the porch, all that was wrong because for all of our training, so much of who we are and bring to our roles happen to be part of this life we've lived. Mm. We learn technique. We learn voice, diction, movement, all the things not to fall off the stage. We learn that. 
Right. But you can't teach character, soul, right. depth, certain realities, mm-hmm. right? Those things are innate and they will help you moving forward. Monique's situation is she happened to get a role. I don't want to insult her or insult myself by saying that that's who she was, but right. she didn't have to go far to find that character. So it was made for her, right? Well, come on. Right, right, right. Yeah, I Denzel, I know the cat, we're not friends. I won't say that. Right. However, he didn't have to go far to find that policeman in training day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. So some of the roles basically are just like, you know, he grew up in it, so he knows it. You know what I mean? He could just jump right into that. He yeah. knows Alonzo somewhere down the line, so he's yeah. able to just go just into, right into the role. Yeah. yeah. Man, and he could flip that and be the lawyer's lawyer. Right, right. The right. doctor's doctor, Malcolm, a, a, a runaway slave. I hate to even use that word. Mm-hmm. And it's real because that cat has talent. Right, right. Talent sometimes is relative, given enough time to grow in your work, enough role after role after role, you get better, you get better. And I won't say anybody can do it. But he has had the luxury to, when he gets these roles, to yeah. outperform what's on paper. He's yeah. that talented. Yeah, that's the that's the thing I was saying about Taraji, man. And I was like, you know, like you said in the beginning, it's a different Taraji P. Henson, man. But when you see the, was it Benjamin Buttons? That's, oh, man. What's, yeah. What's the other movie, uh, Best of Enemies? Yeah. She had? Oh, right. man. And, uh, what, uh, the, the other one with the, the space, um, uh, hidden was it hidden, hidden, hidden colors? Figures. Hidden, hidden figures, figures, hidden figures. Yeah, Come on, man. yeah, right. you know. Yeah. And I'm like, if she's getting this problem to get her money, man, could you imagine what other, you know, actresses are dealing with, man? It's amazing. Listen, man, for every for every person that's getting off that plane at LAX, there's a hundred more on the bus headed <laughs> east going home. <laughs> more, I think. It's real out here. Yeah, and it's, it's hey. so funny. Because people can stop you at a party and tell you how great you were, and you know they don't know you got to put gas in that car. Yeah. <laughs> you got no money, money in your pocket. No money in your pocket. I mean, on, it, it's real. It feels good, and you, you want to hear it. it. Does so much because sometimes, especially TV and film, by the time you guys see it, it's been in the can a month, three months, two years. Mm-hmm. And we are emotionally, if not financially, in a whole nother place. Right, right. Right? And so any given day out here, um, you might do theater. You might do whatever. That small role you might consider a guest shot, a guest spot or a role in a play at one of the theaters here in 99 seats or the larger one. Any given night is an audition because you never know in this town Who's going to see you? Right. Mm. Cat told me years ago, man, do everything as if you're doing it for the last time. Mm. And did you say, did you say, you know, Robert Guillaume? Man. Oh, yeah. man. I, for years. Um, <laughs> I got pictures of Robert, man, uh, oh. on the sofa when my daughter reading The Lion King. Yeah. Dude, oh, man. Do that one. Yeah. yeah. What, a, what, a, what, a, what a friend to have in, in that field, man. That's amazing. I, I, I knew him through my uh, previous um, marriage, uh, but we became fast friends long time, mm. long time, and um, fast friends long time. And I, 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 I cannot tell you the the valuable source of information and that whole uh, thing of a uh, young black hard headed actor and a cat who's been out here. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, I mean, I wasn't wayward or anything like that. I would just get so frustrated, mm-hmm. right? Not understanding that there were not necessarily any defeats in my career, but there were moments that if I was too hard headed, too arrogant, feeling self entitled, if you will, because i done something, and I, I thought that warranted something else. He didn't tamp that down, but he did put in perspective a lot of things for me. He's a, he's one of the cats 
uh, Stephen Henderson, another dude, you, he, he's a theater actor, goes all the way back. He was in the first acting class of Juilliard back in the 60s. Yeah. We are longtime friends. And I've had a chance to work with him, and we're friend friends beyond the theater. And cats like that, you don't get that info right. or that exchange that, again, the young man, the griot, you don't get that anymore. Um, and it's, it's a lost thing. And if there's anything about this business, uh, business that saddens me, it's the fact that um, we're moving so fast. And we're trying to have so much that sometimes those words of wisdom or that little five and 10 minute conversation with a cat that's coming up or with one that's been there, male or female, we lose those because we're not in the same world anymore. We used to be all artists. Now we are this type of artist, that type of artist. We are an influencer. I'm this, I'm that. And yeah. that that love and that camaraderie, there are cliques out in this town, man. Yeah. Right. Bad ones. Yeah. yeah. I ain't gonna lie, they are. And cool, have that. You know, but to be able to share not what you make, but how you make it. Right. You know, to be able to share uh a kind word or encouragement. Man, out here, you got to be careful who you're talking to. They may take that and go some way right. off with it somewhere else. Right, right. right, right. You got people in restaurants having a general conversation whispering. Yeah. Man, no, they, listen, they, yeah. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. I tell my son now, you know, the word artist and uh, like craftsman it's it's loose now you know what i mean like when somebody says that they're an artist you know like you know i'm like he's not even talented man you know what i mean he's just in this position but he's not an artist you know even when it comes to like basketball or you know different you know sports or different um things where you consider yourself a craftsman you know what i mean where it's like it, it's not there anymore you it's know more everybody's like anything it's more microwave yeah. and I, mean, I will say this in terms of talent because there's someone somewhere right now saying, yeah, that brother got that role. He's not even, he wasn't even that talented. Yeah. I respect that. Talent is relative. It, what, do you <laughs> get what the, it, it, it is, man, because, listen, I know some guys, I know some women, some artists, um, all colors, genres and, and uh, genders and whatever, who are cold. I mean, bruh. Give them the script and get out the way. Right. Not even in the business anymore. Wow. Yeah. Because they're what they saw as art wasn't meshing with the the hour TV. You know, it used to be fifty five minutes. It went from that to forty eight. Now it's bound to forty three because you got to have room for commercials, right? Yeah. So, so much good work gets left on the floor in the editing room. Mm-hmm. Or it's not about your performance. It's about what story they're trying to tell. Mm-hmm. You know, film is for actors. TV is for directors, right? right. And the theater is for all of us. Mm-hmm. It's a collective effort, mm-hmm. you know? and um. So I understand what you mean about may or may not be talented, and I respect that. I'm sure I fit <laughs> that bill on something. However, I will say this. See them in something else before. Okay. Now, okay. It, it, you see what I'm saying? Right. Because it, that might not have been their thing. I know a brother, he's, he's, he's a friend. I won't disrespect him or myself. He got a role, and it was a great role. <clears throat> he was making money, and he was no longer part of the production for whatever reason. And the way I always looked at it, I know him. He's wonderful. But in what he was doing, I always thought, boy, that must have been a good aud- uh, audition because – Right. The guy before him or after him probably would have done a more uh, consistent, right, believable job. Mm. But he got it on that day 
it was his and he did. That's the way it is. Okay. Man, somebody had a flat tire on the way to an audition and missed <laughs> it. That that woman gets it. That woman doesn't. Right. You never know about this business, man. But so to try to loosely go back to your statement, I won't disagree with you in terms of talent. I will say our egos, our passions, our commitment and work sometimes leads us to think we can do every role. That's what I was going to say. It sounds like you're just saying like, it's like more like coaching. Like you got to put the person in the right position, you know, got to be on the right, right team, you know, that kind of Absolutely. Thing. Because right. you may be great, but you may be a foot taller than the leading lady or uh, there may be a complexion thing. Could be anything that doesn't allow that to work. Okay. Right. So, uh, and those are really far fetched uh, um, um, uh, statements. There are reasons, but mixing and matching is important. But that just brings us back to about 30 minutes ago. Bro, if it's us making things about us for us, yeah. See, all of us don't have to be a certain uh, uh, hue, if you will, of brown to be family. Right, I got family twice as dark as me, twice as light as me, all same family. Right. All same family. Same thing out here, man. Um we um we we get caught up into into perfection and we move away sometimes from the reality uh of the story. Serve the story. Serve the story. I don't care what it is you do, film, TV, theater, whatever it is, you know, podcast. Serve the story. You know, don't just have your, and respectfully, have what you want to say and not hear what the person you're talking to has to say. They may blow it up for you. Right. It may be good. Same thing, man. Same thing. Yeah. So let me ask you, I mean, um, and all this is real good, man. I mean, we can go hours talking about how the business works and all, mm-hmm. but just to um, talk about your book. Now, this is your first book. This is your, this is your first, you know, foray into the whole writing thing. So you've done television, you've done stage, you've done movies, you've done commercials, and now you're an author. Was that a tough thing for you or was it like an easy transition given everything else that you've, you know, sought to do and, and accomplish, I would say. You know, man, I I don't battle with my faith. I am a strong and true believer. I just want balance and truth. Just in oh, the man. Yeah. I, I, you know what I mean? It's balance. Yeah, right. I don't have to get everything I want, but I know that they deserve better. Right. That's me, right? right. I say that to say that sometimes Man, sometimes the creator has a way of getting your attention. Mm -hmm. And I was a young prison guard, man. I worked in penitentiary uh, in Texas. Um, And I was, I don't know if I was off one day or whatever, but I I used to go to these secondhand shops, Salvation Army. And, you know, I I, I like, that's my thing. We grew up in that, you know, so real talk. And um, I happened to be in one this day and, you know, Young man, my twenties got a little convertible outside. I'm, you know, all all the what ego afforded me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but I'm I'm in this Salvation Army, and I saw the family that's in the book that I write about. The young man, I saw them come into the Salvation Army, and for some reason, I couldn't stop watching them. Hmm. And I looked, and it, it was that little boy. He was me. Right, and that was my mom. And I was watching, and I felt really bad, like this boy. I'm like, why am I watching these people? And who's watching me, watching them? Right. But I saw the story. I saw that story, guys, 37, almost 38 years ago. Mm. I never wanted to write it. I wasn't a writer, I mean, you know. Um, but I never wanted to forget it. Right. So I would make a little note little note here. I would say, I'm going to work on this book. I'd go five years and never write anything or even forget about it. Right. Um, but it's been the last five or six that I said, 
this this kid junior i don't know his name i only know that's what his mom called him mm-hmm. i don't know her name right. all i heard was mama mm-hmm. right and the the brother and sister the young one don't know theirs mm-hmm. i was just seeing this family interact and the mom was you know want to kill the story for anyone but they were in that store quote unquote store salvation army for a particular purpose and I watched them from the time they walked in until the time they walked out and got at the, uh, went to the bus stop, got on the bus. And I've always had that story. That is the final chapter in the book, right? Right. But to write the book, I was like, that's not a book. That's a scene at best. So I had to create this world. How do I get them to the store? Mm. I went and took my life. And so the chapters leading up to uh, meeting them in the store were all episodes or moments in my life. And I put chapter by chapter. Um, There is the opening chapter of the book that never happened to me, but it happened to some friends of mine down the street. Very poignant moment. But again, I had to say, how do I get this kid who I just met but never spoke to, how do I get him to this store this day? And that's how I did it. Mm. So in terms of writing the book, man, did I want to write a book? I don't know if I wanted to write a book as much as I wanted to tell Junior's story. And what I hope even to this day has happened to him and he would be in his 40s right now, and you know, uh, but he was such a strong, dignified young brother. And I saw him, and I saw me, and I never forgot it. And lo and behold, life has um, shown me some things, and um, I've been able to do what my my friend and mentor August Wilson said to me. He asked uh, the cat I spoke about earlier, Claude Purdy. He said, Claude, I'm having problems with Ma Rainey. <clears throat> I don't know when to bring her in. And I, I don't know what I wanted to say. I got the guys in the band. And Claude told him, man, stop putting words in their mouth and just let them talk. Listen to them. There's your story. And so I use that. Loosely over the years, but when I really focused, I started realizing, you know what? I'm trying to imagine what Junior's life was. Junior, just in those hours that I saw him, he already told me. Uh. He told me who he was. His mama told me who she was. And the kids and their story and how he was such a, I won't say leader, but the brother and sister depended on him, and he did it without hesitation. And I was like, boy, if you have a child, you want him to be like Junior or her to be like Junior. And he um, he spoke about having uh, this boot that he wore because that's the essence of it. He's called shoes because he used to wear these correct. He wore these corrective boots. For the story he was telling the guy in the store, I was eavesdropping. He was in a fire, got burnt, the leg and all that. But he really wanted those chucks, those high tops. Right, right, right. And they happened to be on the rack, old beat up chucks uh, on the rack that day in the store. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, you know what? I have a tremendous ego. <laughs> right. But, you know, God had me by the collar. He said, bro, I want you to see some. Mm-hmm. I want you to see some. What you throw away, people make lives out of. Yeah, right. right? right, right. And I saw that, and I'm like, this is it. Mm-hmm. This is it. So this is how Junior came to be. This is how Shoes came to be. It was never about money. There is something that's that's going to happen in terms of promoting Tomorrow that is out of my hands, that will be a massive blessing uh, 
I shouldn't have brought it up, but it's going to happen. I got confirmation on that. Mm-hmm. And wherever it goes from there, tomorrow it is. But I, I learned what's this thing. I don't know if it's scripture or if it's just, you know, uh, something in our culture. We we have not because we ask not. Right. right? right. And I ask for help from my friends, my social media friends. I had people read it because I was uncertain, you know, because it was so revealing um, when I had to add my own portions of it. um, How's this going to work? And people read it and stepped up and did whatever. And I, I, I can never repay the people who helped me get to these 60 pages or whatever. But, um, if it means anything to uh, to them, um, that they are very much a part of every word, every letter, every moment, because without them, I could not create this world for Junior that the creator put in front of me, almost daring me over 38 years. I dare you not to write it. Now, let me ask you something. You said that yes. like, right now it's been over, what, the, the story was in your head for about over 30 years or so, right? Right. And so Junior... As you said, we'll be maybe around forty something, right? Yeah, right. right. What would you say to Junior if you actually had a chance to meet that kid uh, that was in that store that inspired this book? Yeah, man, you weren't supposed to ask that one. <laughs> now, now it's on the floor, brother. You got- <laughs> oh man, it is too simple to say. I would say thank you. Um, I, what would I say? I, man, you have to give me a, a, a beat because I would hope and, and pray that if I were in the room with him, that I would know what to say. I, I, I would know how to, I guess, say thank you without just thank you. I, I, I just, if he could see what I saw when I saw him. Right. If he could feel what I felt, if that honor and respect and that love that his mother gave him, right, and then the little brothers and sisters, he was everything that the quote unquote, he was the man of the house, a reluctant man of the house. Right. And if I could say anything, I, I would run the the gift of possibility the 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 gift of um of understanding responsibility through the eyes of this 11 year old kid Mm -hmm. i'll I'll spend the rest of the night trying to think about what would i say i'd be in such awe of him (laughs) because i would hope that wherever we were is at a place that he is at his best Right. Whatever best is, right? Because yeah. best is relative also. Whatever it is, I hope he would understand that whatever his life was starting out to be, it made such an impact. It has been instrumental in me raising my children. The volunteer work I've been doing over 40 years, the yeah. things that I've done, and, 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 and you know, all the, the homeless work. I, mean, I might not have called up his name, but it's because of the character of that cat and seeing that and knowing that I was him at some point in my life. Um, I I hope that I can tell him in a way beyond thank you how important his life and that moment was to me and that I've taken it and tried to break that bread off everywhere I could in the 38 years since. So I don't even know if that made sense, but but that was a uh, yeah, it, made, it made perfect. I sense. was not prepared. You actually you actually answered my next question because I was about to ask you: Did you um, you know, did you feel like this was therapeutic for you? You know what I mean, like the project. Ooh. You know what I mean, and and and, that, and the more I hear you talk, you know, you had lost for words at certain things, and you know, uh, I'm, it's just obviously I'm, it was it had some effect on you throughout. The I'm life. an emotional cat. <clears throat> I I am one of those dudes. And I, I claim it proudly. Sometimes I wish I can control it. But I am because I am so moved by life. I'm a fan of fellow actors. Um, 
big and small. I I love what we do. I I I I'm a fan of just humans just trying to make it every day out out between the sidewalks. There were days at the table in front of the computer or with the pencil or even notes I would take on my phone so I wouldn't forget. I couldn't even get through them because, again, what I was writing was the notes of the things that I wanted in the book. But spiritually, I felt at the moment you know that 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 hand on my shoulder i felt that 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 arm around me saying you can do this you can do it just tell the truth tell the truth mm-hmm. don't worry about what people going to think you know yeah 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 your mama worked for some white folk coming up and she right. went to nursing school but all of that don't worry about that because that's your journey. So trying to tell it without shaping it to make it seem like we were this certain family. No, bro, we came up a certain way and I'm proud of it. The cathartic moments were, I can say this, I can tell this, and I don't have to feel a certain way about it. Because what it did for me was allow me also to get off my own you know, about feeling my own insecurities right. about certain things. Man, we were, we spent most of our life, you know, in Houston, but so much was in Huntsville. We didn't know we were broke till we got to Houston. Right. <laughs> and, you know, my dad hustled, man. He had two and three and four jobs. The mom, you know, was no longer working with the Williams and she went to nursing school. So life changed a little bit, but um, yes, very uh, uh, cathartic, also very humbling. Mm -hmm. And I learned also that, as I have learned in in the theater world coming up, we have an unlimited amount of stories, Mm -hmm. unlimited amount. You have your Delaware stories, you have your Brooklyn stories, you have... From concept to podcast, you have those stories, unlimited. And they are worthy of being told. I had to realize that it wasn't about me. It was about Junior. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, he allowed me to tell my own, I hate to say that phrase, my own truth, um, because it was never about me. But I couldn't get away from the fact that he was a mirror image of me. And in a certain world, at a certain time, I probably would not have looked at Junior or his family one way or the other. Mm -hmm. It was at that time, at that moment. And um, I also think the universe said it's time, you know, to uh, listen. And, um, and And I did. And I, I credit Junior with uh, not necessarily saving my life, but my spirit. And uh, again, what would I say to him? I try to say that without scaring the hell out of him. <laughs> you, know, you know, the funny thing about this whole thing is like you said earlier, and you said, um, and I feel this way too. I think even, I think the reason why we even do this podcast is for what the statement that you said earlier, we have a need for balance. You know what I mean? And um, I just don't feel like the balance is out there like we had when we were younger. You know what I mean? And did you feel like this, even while doing this, did it bring your, that need for balance? Because I think, like, I, I think before we talked, before we started the well, this conversation that we were having, I said to you earlier, you know, we could, we could take the easy route. We could actually sit here and talk to rappers and whatever. We grew up with, in the, in the, in the, in, in the hip hop. We grew up in hip hop, you know, in the neighborhood and stuff like that. But as you can see, you know, with podcasting, this is like the norm for everybody. You know what I mean? But we want to do something that, you know, brings that balance, you know, and have conversations with people such as yourself and, um, you know, kind of uplifting, you know, just uplifting yeah, conversation. Yeah, uplifting. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, it, it amazes me how we can have so much and so little at the same time, blows my mind. Right. For all of our excess, right. 
and access for all of our finances and influence. So much of it is us trying to say us, I don't want to separate, us trying to say, see me, hear me, recognize me, care about me. All those things, if we turn the 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 camera the other way, see them, hear them, recognize them, want for them the same thing that you want for yourself. Now we start to create balance. Mm, right. There is such a solo, individualistic approach we have to life right now. Right. We want to celebrate every single mundane moment right. of our lives. <laughs> right. There are people, and um, you know what I'm going to say, there are people who go on our social media and celebrate their own birthday. Right. Mm-hmm. Today is my birthday. And you'll see they might get four or five likes. And it makes me wonder, and I feel really bad when I see it, <laughs> we do not have friends right. beyond the imaginary cell phone neighborhood right. who would celebrate your birthday mm-hmm. or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And granted, I use it as well to promote. We all do. We, we do what do, yeah. we do. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. But that part of this saddens me because for all of the joy you're taking the selfies, you're in front of the drink and the beach is behind you. For all of that, most times you're alone. Mm. Right. By right. yourself. Yeah. And I wonder sometimes how happy is that person really? Yeah, if you're really enjoying a moment, you know, why would you just sit down and take a picture of yourself at that time? If you're really enjoying the moment, it doesn't make any sense, you know. Right. <laughs> and there's a picture that's been on the internet a couple of years. <clears throat> and it looked like it was at a marathon or something. And whatever it was, if there were 40 people in the frame, um, Everyone had their cell phone out taking a picture of the moment. Right. Except this one older white woman. And she was leaning on the fence, the biggest smile. Enjoying it. Uh, enjoying it, yeah. yeah. But in, in our thirst to grab the moment so we can say we were there, right. she was the only one who was there. Right, right. Wow, wow. wow. You with me? Yeah. Right? I've never forgotten it. And so I I, I don't know how we get back to that balance. Mm. But I tell you, it is closer than we think. I think that now, you know, it's, it's, it's coming slow. But you can see that there's people now that really want, you know, they want this balance. You know what mm. I mean? Sometimes mm. I look at things on the internet and it'd be that one thing that I might see on the YouTube video, I'm like, wow, this brother That was it. He got what he got what I want right here. You know what I mean? Right. He's right. having that conversation. I think also too, even um I have to give these guys uh, I don't even know what you want to call them. Um it's kind of like urban media. You know, mm-hmm. I give urban media a lot of credit because a lot of times, you know, media is so um so uh controlled. It's like to see urban media now where somebody kind of like check you on yes what you're saying, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the beautiful part. I think um, those kind of things are bringing it back. We pounce so quickly on things. Right. And we pounce sometimes so negatively. Right. You right. know, and most of the people who are naysayers about whatever they see will never have participated in anything like that. Right, right, right. But from here, from with their thumb, right, 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 they, right, they, right, now right, they right. play them. Right, 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 right. right. You're in the game, right? You're in the game, right? You're in the game. You're in the game right now. But, and I won't be, you know, try to sugarcoat this, but to be able to use it all in a good way, or at least, what's that mama say? Mama say, baby, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say nothing. Don't say say it at all. Don't say nothing. 
Right. Right. And you, you, we have to run that through our own filter. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm saying or putting out there, first of all, does anyone care? Mm -hmm. Well, we shouldn't worry about that if we're telling our factual truth. But does it help? Does it move the story along? Does it add to the to the human conversation? Mm -hmm. And we have to ask ourselves that, but sometimes we don't. We're so impulsive. We're so ready to be the one who brought down a certain thing right, or right. Uh, the first two without information, put it out there with, with <laughs> right, no clarity right, 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 right. And then, you know, you have to backtrack, but once it's out there, it's out there in the ether forever. Yeah, I don't. I don't celebrate the sensation, the sensationalism of foolishness. But yeah. you know, I do want what I do when I say urban media and stuff like that is in the sense that, like, um, you know, you have sometimes you have artists or you know, people saying things that are just totally horrible, and say, "Hey, yo, listen, brother, man, what? Why did you say that? Like, why?" Why would you say something like that? You know what I mean? I could celebrate you and I could still say, Yo, why, what are you doing, brother? Why Why would you put this out into the world? You know, that kind of thing, you know? N number two, we also, and we're getting there. Don't get me wrong. We're not we're solving not there, right? problems in this triangle. Mm -hmm. But we have to continue to work on learning to agree to disagree. And I might disagree. I don't hate you. Right, right, right. And as a matter of fact, I might disagree. But if we talk longer, we may come to a mutual right. understanding. Right. But we take things so personally. We take them as these personal slights or, yeah. or in, in indictments on our character or whatever. And I... I I don't know it's so funny you, you brought up Taraji a little. Man, the, the audience is split over that because people who don't know the journey, right? They, they say, well, you know what, Taraji, you got millions. You've been on this, you've been on that. Yeah, well, you know what? Anything. Don't count people's money. Mm -mm. You don't know how they got it. Right. right? And her conversation is going to benefit everyone in in the long run. It's just going to um, it's just going to take some understanding and some clarity. Um, there are some websites, man, some things on Instagram or whatever that are moving the black agenda forward. Right. And there are some that are inclusive that are moving the inclusive agenda forward. Right. But when we condemn before we even know, right. you know, well, uh, what it is, when we say no before we've allowed yes to even be part of the conversation, we're not hurting the person that we are, quote unquote, attacking. We're hurting us because we've drawn this conclusion right. that I know better than you. Right, 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 right. right. We, we, we don't move like that. Right. You're right about we that. We don't move like that. Yeah. Yeah. So in the last few minutes we have together, Russell, God knows we can talk. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, man, this, is, uh, this yeah, is yeah. this is wonderful. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Would you like to come back? We got a lot of things we can discuss. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and bro, not only that, <laughs> I was in New York two weeks ago with my daughter. Uh -huh. So I'm in the city quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Right. So we can do this like this, or we can do this over coffee or one of them. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Love that. I would love that. Well, that. you know, the, the and, and the beauty, this is, you know, we talked about, you know, therapeutic. I think these conversations that me, my brother and my friend have, man, it's like, mm -hmm. they, you know, I, I guess because we live, we live out of state now. So um, right. the therapeutic portion about it is like, I remember being in Brooklyn and coming downstairs on the steps and, you know, we just having this conversation and, you know, so we, we in a different space now, so we can't come outside. So, so this is the steps, right? Yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah, the this steps. is the steps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> think about, think about this. Think uh, about, uh, and from a monetary sense, right. how much money was left and or created on those steps? Oh man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because every conversation yeah. that we had back then, people every, were making money off it right one. now. <laughs> every yeah. one. Every one. Yeah. one. Yeah. Yep. Every yeah. one. You know, we are, we are we are what we're looking for, but sometimes we got to stop and realize, mm-hmm. you know, it may not come in the package we think, but it's there. It's possible. Is everyone going to win? No, but because we don't win doesn't mean we have to stop others from winning. Right, right, right. I love to see my people win. I mm-hmm. love to see kids win. I love to see children when they get it. Whatever, yeah. it is, oh, whatever it is, that light comes on, right? Yeah. Yeah. On those steps, my daughter did her 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 um, thesis on kitchen table. Mm. That's what she called it. Everything she got from here at that kitchen table. Right, right. That was her senior. That was her thesis, and she's moved forward with that. And um, we don't realize, man, how valuable we are, how important we are. How so much of our self talk is who we are, right? Positive, negative, right? And again, people make lives on things that we throw away and forget about, right? right? But cats are like, yo, what y'all do? You're taking it now <clears throat> and capturing it, right? Right. On, on video, audio, and it's all history, man, because we, we all have a story. And it needs to be heard in some form because if it never goes beyond here for someone in your audience, it will go somewhere for them. Mm-hmm. If nothing else, the therapy of it will help them. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So what I want to do is I want to have you, if you can, just let the people know Shoes is available now. Where can they get it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Shoes by Russell Andrews. It's available on Amazon dot com barnes and nobles dot com walmart dot com and you can actually google it and it'll tell you about eight other um uh outlets uh i got a very beautiful message from a friend of mine uh in the uk it just hit there she bought hers amazon dot com nice. you know in the uk right. so it's out there man yeah, it's right. out there and so I, you know, I, I I'm fortunate, brother. And again, Junior is um, I it would be cool is if his kids got one. That would mm-hmm. blow my mind. Yeah, we're blowing like, my mind. <laughs> you know the pa- you know the passion that you have in your voice for this project is what you know. I mean, anybody listening, you know, you should run out and get a copy. You know, what I mean, yeah. Just or just you know, however you get it, you know. Kendall and you know different things on Amazon or wherever what other the the sister that brought me to you uh-huh. um, we are as we speak that is the next I'm working on the second one because shoes is a trilogy oh, okay this is the first of three All right. mm. I'm sorry that's repetitive but it is but um Chris and I are working on the short okay. that is the next. Because I think, I feel and think that Shoes is an animated series in the style of Little Bill. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shoes is going to be that, right? Right, right. You know what? Put it out there. Shoes is going to be like Little Bill. Yeah. Okay. Right? And, excuse me. And um, we're going to do the short here, um, Perfect World in a couple of months. And we'll go from there, man. Um, it's it. You always have to get other people to see your vision, but if you don't see it first, yeah, you won't have you know, it. Yeah, there yeah. you go. You won't yeah. have it. So yeah, uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna roll the way Matthew Cherry went with his thing about the hair <laughs> and yeah. the anime thing and took that one book, and right? That. You see that? I'm gonna took the one book and made it into well, it was the one there short and made it into a whole. It was a book too, I believe, right? What did it start off as yeah. a book and yeah. then made a whole yeah, series off of this thing? You know, yes. what I mean? so it, just, yeah. it proves that it can happen. While we on the topic of animation, please shout out your illustrator of your book. Oh, we Victor Onyenobi, yeah, bad boy. Yeah. That yeah. cat. I don't know. I think Victor may be in Memphis mm-hmm. or in Tennessee. But he has worked out of Dubai, Nigerian brother. Uh, Talented. We went back and forth about my idea, his idea, but it was never in uh, a 
different uh, perspective of the uh, of the concept. Mm-hmm. And um, I cannot tell you it was worth all of. And again, it was creative differences. Right. It was never personal, or whatever. But I had to allow him. I spoke earlier. Allow him to do what I asked him to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And he also had to allow me to give him what my vision was. And what we did as two brothers, and I love this, we put away the fact that he is so talented and good. And I couldn't get away from the reality of my story. Mm-hmm. How do we make that into that cover and so on and so on in the book? And once we got back out of the way, I will say that, and I claim some of it. Once we did that and said, you know what? Trust it. Trust the process. Mm -hmm. And that is a talented cat. And I hope, it is my goal and my plan. As I move forward, if he's available, he will be the first call because that's a bad boy. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Bad boy. Hopefully this book will do what it, you know, like, you know, how you just mentioned Little Bill, you know, and it brings yeah. smiles on our faces, you know what I mean? Hopefully it's a do for generations like the right, Billy Joe. I'll jo- tell you all right now, yeah. because you all seen yeah. Little Bill. Yeah, Billy, right. Joe, J- Billy Joe Jobs, Little Bill. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Fat Albert. Yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. I see it happening. I yeah, see it happening. I, yeah, yeah. Because yep. that was going to be one of my things. Like, when are we going to see this on some type of screen, man? Like, you know. It's happening, man. I see. As we speak. As we speak. As we speak. Okay. Another thing too, I know you have stage walkers. I know in this yeah. whole conversation, can you please touch on stage walkers before we wrap up? Yeah, stage walkers is my theater company, and I I consult now. I'll be back to actually producing. I started that so I can allow kids or young um, uh, young adults, in high school, junior high, whatever, to see. Um, both sides of the curtain, behind the curtain and on stage. Mm -hmm. That was the whole idea. I didn't realize it was going to do what it did. Again, we asked, we have not because we asked not. I asked Loretta Devine to be in my reigning. It was 99 seats and in Hollywood, but it was on just Wilson. Mm -hmm. Few people say no to Wilson. And I didn't know, we didn't know what was going to come of that. And she said, yes. I can't wait to do it. I love my rainy. I've been wanting to do it. What? Wow, wow, wow. Now, here's the thing. I told the people I was getting money from that I already had her. I never met her. Mm. Bruh, gamble. <laughs> I had to do some other little fast hustles to, to pay for everything, but it for itself. I was right. able to get James Avery. So Loretta oh, Devine and James Avery, Uncle Bill, they helped me start my company right. without even knowing it. Wow. They were just there because they were actors. They loved theater. And they trusted that I wasn't going to allow them to look bad helping me. Right. Right? right. And they are as much a part of the the uh, the beginning of stage walkers as anything i did my next one with james which was jitney uh one that i you know i'd done i was uh the original young blood um from the table to the stage on to london the olivia all that mm. and so i produced that one i produced um piano lesson with uh vanessa bell calloway mm. wow. again you would think that these people are so big, they wouldn't, but they will because if you believe it, they believe it. Right, right, right. Right. Right? And they came in and showed us all what it means to be A-list in this town. And I was fortunate to have A-list black actors or any um, 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 color in my place. And uh, it built my company and you know, again, uh, now I can talk and I have the pictures to prove it. <laughs> How can you go wrong? You got some pillars around you. You yeah. just named some nice names, Come man. On, man. Some nice, nice names, man. Come on, yeah. Come on man. Uh, and with that kind of trust, uh, given where they've been and what they've done, right? Um, 
and they were at rehearsal an hour early and left an hour late. Mm. They, they showed me what it's like to be an artist, as we use the word. Right. They're artists. They are stars. Mm. I mean, every Thursday, you know, Fresh Prince and Loretta and all these films. Oh, and yeah. they, you can go all the way back with Vanessa and all that. Mm -hmm. But they are artists, true artists, and they came and showed us what it was to to commit, and I am uh, I'm better for it. Mm. I'm better for it. All right. And you know, before we before we really go right now, I would be kind of remiss not to mention your role on Insecure. Was it like Vice President <laughs> Gaines or something? Man, that scene is hilarious. Yeah, man. Man. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's, Brothers. It's, Brothers. We'll be, we should build a wall. <laughs> like, talking about it's students, a dude, man. <laughs> a dude uh, two weeks ago in New York, I was uh, walking with my daughter. It's a guy who was crossing the street. Uh, we were like 23rd and 6th or something in the middle of the block. He stopped me for that very reason. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I that I listen, I had hoped that that thing would keep going, but he only had a certain lifetime or lifespan mm -hmm. in the series in that season two. But do when I tell you enjoyed that, um he was he wasn't racist. <laughs> Yeah. However, he was pro black. Right, 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 right. Stick right, together. Right. And he was he was a, a a a combination of all my uncles and cousins and my homies. Right, 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 right. Right, and he had the bad shoes on. It was yeah, the whole. I mean, no disrespect to character. to our Mexican brothers and sisters. When you said it was brown and taco meat, brother. <laughs> It was yeah, rough. Man. Classic, I, loved it. Classic, man. I loved it. You know what's interesting? Uh, the uh, the Latinos, the community of actors and people I would see who recognized, they loved it as much. And it wasn't that they thought I was or was not, mm -hmm. but I wasn't apologetic. I was just me. Yeah. Right. right. And like with us, bro, I don't care what the politics are. Just don't don't try to fool me. Right, right, right. right, right. Be you. You be you. Right. I'll be there. Everything's okay. Right. And um, but yeah, that that was um, that was a good one. I will say this too. You don't know if you know this. Seventy percent of that um, the crew mm -hmm. uh, was female. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Director, writer, producers, camera. Everything. When I tell you, they ran a tight ship organization. Right. Yes, uh, it, it, it should always be that way. But when that's someone who called on her friends and they stepped up, it was a brother in there too, also, yeah. um, um, who was exact. It was a longtime friend as well. But majority of that crew was female, all nationalities, and they. Um, th went above and beyond and you could see it in the work and i was proud to be a part of that i really really was proud to be part of that you should have brought you should you know see if you can bring the principal over to abbott elementary that no. would perfect, perfect. That, would be, that would be great from man. Your mouth. From your mouth. Somebody, I'm a, I'm gonna try to seek yeah. that out. Miss Brunson, about Ms. Brunson if you're listening to this podcast, you got to bring right. Yeah. Yeah. To this <laughs> Philadelphia native that she is. You I gotta, appreciate that. Yeah, brother. yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, but listen, man, it was really, really a pleasure. Wonderful. This was a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Thank um, you, man. Yeah, and I thank you again. Making making a space, and please don't be a stranger. You know, anytime you. Got I know something. how to hit you, and again, I'm in New York quite a bit, brother. Yeah, We're yeah. This yeah, up. yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, definitely. And then whenever you got something, you know you got a platform. All right? All right, my all right. brother, I appreciate it. No, no right. problem, brother. All right. So we're gonna about to wrap up. I'm going to put all your um, information in our notes, okay? Absolutely. All right. Okay, the one we want... Ah, getting tongue-tied here, guys. <laughs> the only one my podcast is available on all major platforms you stream your podcast on. Also, check out our Only One Mike Podcast YouTube channel to catch up on the past and current episodes. And please don't forget to rate the show and subscribe. 
And you can check us out on Instagram. And I had to change this, Russell, to X instead of Twitter. At the only one Mike P1, Facebook and LinkedIn at the only one Mike Podcast. You can contact us via email at the only one Mike zero zero at gmail.com or call us with your comments or questions at 302-367-7219. We thank you once again for your time. What's up, brother? Mike? Appreciate you. Appreciate you. My publicist, Chris Jordan. Yeah, Chris. We have work to do, sweetheart. Yeah, thanks, Chris, yeah. for setting this up. All right. Yeah. And we encourage you, please, to speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even mm-hmm. the dull and the ignorant, because they, too, have their story to tell. So until next time, please keep in mind that we never had to run from the Ku Klux Klan, so we shouldn't have to run from a black man. Peace. Right. Yeah. Peace. Peace, my brother. Y'all have a good one, baby. Yes. Yes, sir.